In the harsh landscape of 2012, the economic collapse of America threw the country into chaos. Rising joblessness and increasing crime rates pushed the prison system to its limits. Private companies controlling correctional facilities usher in a grim era, epitomized by the infamous Terminal Island Penitentiary. Live broadcasts of brutal cage fights become a sadistic spectacle, but even these gruesome events can't satisfy the audience's craving for more violence. From this thirst for bloodshed emerges the notorious Death Race, a deadly competition where inmates fight for their freedom, with their cars transformed into weapons of destruction. As the current death race approaches its climax, only two cars remain in the brutal contest. One belongs to the mysterious Frankenstein, partnered with the Navigator case. The other is driven by Frank's long-standing rival, Machine Gun Joe. Both cars speed toward the finish line, their drivers determined to win. An unexpected glitch disables Frank's weapons, forcing him to rely on clever tactics. Using his car's shield to his advantage, he gains a brief lead, but Joe is not ready to be defeated. Case, sensing the impending danger, seeks an escape from the impending disaster. With tension escalating and stakes soaring, she ejects herself from the car, allowing Frank to cross the finish line simultaneously with Joe's explosive attempt. The race is won but at a heavy price. Amidst this chaos, we meet Jensen Ames, an ex-convict turned industrial worker. As he grapples with the imminent closure of the steel mill where he works, Jensen witnesses the oppression of his co-workers and the brutality of anti-riot police. Incensed by their treatment, he joins the fray to defend his colleagues, earning himself a violent confrontation. Returning home to his wife and child, Jensen's world is shattered when a masked intruder claims his wife's life, setting him up as the scapegoat for her murder. Six months later, Jensen's life takes an even darker turn as he's relocated to Terminal Island Prison, a realm ruled by cruelty and violence. Guard Ulrich, embodying sadistic authority, subjects Jensen to inhumane treatment, greeted with freezing water, physical assaults, and a cell filled with inmates eager to inflict harm. Jensen, however, proves his mettle by fending off his cellmates and asserting his dominance. In the prison's chow hall, Jensen's presence does not go unnoticed. Observing eyes rest upon him, coach, gunner, and lists. Lists recognize the once legendary driver, now a fallen star who dismantled his career. A confrontation ignites when Pachenko and his ally taunt Jensen, their insults escalating into a violent clash. The authorities intervene, escorting Jensen to Claire Hennessy, the formidable warden. Hennessy, well versed in Jensen's past, unveils a proposition fueled by desperation. She desires to resurrect the legacy of Frankenstein, the iconic racer who met his end on the operating table. Keeping his death a secret, she coerces Jensen into becoming the new Frankenstein. With the promise of freedom after five victories, Jensen needs only one more win to secure his release, inheriting the mantle of the revered icon. Jensen's hesitation is silenced by Hennessy's threats of solitary confinement, compelling him to comply. Immersed in the prison's auto shop, he encounters Coach and his team, the minds behind Frankenstein's car. They become his guides, leading him through the intricate world of mechanics and driving. Within the prison's intricate web, each racing team inhabits a separate pit, unity amidst the chaos a mere illusion. Hennessy's clandestine workshop echoes with intrigue as its purpose remains concealed. Power is firmly vested in her, shrouding Terminal Island Prison in her unyielding grip. Jensen's new role as Frankenstein is known to only a select few. The team and a handful of guards tread the path of secrecy. Guided by Coach, Jensen encounters his chariot of the race, a modified Mustang V8 fastback. This vehicular marvel boasts an arsenal of defensive and offensive tools, though ammunition is withheld until race day to thwart escape attempts. The prison's island locale reinforces the inescapable reality, its sole access point heavily fortified against potential breaches. After an initial rendezvous with the car, Jensen and his team convene at the prison's yard. The race unfolds across three stages, demanding strategic elimination of competitors in the first two and breakneck speed in the final stretch. Navigators, predominantly women from the women's facility, accompany each driver. A norm Joe conspicuously eschews, replacing them with male teammates due to his ruthless reputation. Amidst this assembly of drivers, Lists acquaints Jensen with the formidable contenders. 14K, the resourceful triad member. Hector Grimm, the fanatical devotee of Hennessy. Slovo Pachenko, Aryan Brotherhood leader. And Travis Colt, the fallen NASCAR luminary. Tensions escalate when Joe's provocations hit a crescendo, igniting a fierce rivalry between him and Jensen. However, a revelation in the yard reverberates through Jensen's psyche. 
Returning inmates bear GPS tracking bracelets, their wrists shackled with a device that connects them to his wife's murderer. The sinister presence of the same technology worn by the perpetrator jolts him, unraveling a thread of mystery amidst the cacophony of the prison's dark underbelly. As the long-anticipated day of the first race stage dawns, Jensen is enveloped in Frankenstein's legacy, donning the icon's attire, mask, and even his ring. The resurrection of Frank's mystique revitalizes the show's dwindling viewership, drawing them back into the arena of excitement. Coach's counsel echoes the enigmatic nature of Frankenstein. Silence is the key, as Frank never conversed with other drivers. The exception exists within the car, where mirrored windows and the discretion of Case maintain the secret. Amidst the preparations, Jensen engages Case in conversation, seeking to uncover her own story. She unveils her crime, the murder of a corrupt cop who was an abusive husband. With the race commencing, the initial laps remain relatively tame, violence awaiting the activation of weapons in the second round. Nonetheless, the drivers maneuver to jostle opponents off the track. Jensen, guided by Case's intimate knowledge of the terrain, vies for the lead, overtaking Joe thanks to a strategic shortcut. Hennessy's sinister intentions unfurl as she activates the car's weaponry, manholes on the ground triggering the gadgets. The track transforms into a battleground, the death heads wreaking havoc. Grimm's ruthless actions claim a minor driver's life, while Joe's vehicle skids off course after an oil attack. A missile from 14K seals Joe's fate, leaving him defeated. Meanwhile, Jensen grapples with his own car's issues. Despite successfully activating the weapons, glitches plague the systems, the rear shield barely holding. Thinking on his feet, he devises a daring plan. Case unfastens the napalm and joins Jensen, her seat serving as a projectile to ignite Colt's car. Napalm engulfs the vehicle, with Case igniting the inferno, removing Colt from the race. As the race continues after Colt leaves, Jensen gets into another intense competition with Joe. However, Pachenko's disturbing hand gesture, like the one made by his wife's killer, breaks Jensen's focus. Joe seizes the chance and pushes Jensen's car back, putting him in last place. Pachenko wins the stage, leaving three drivers defeated and six remaining for the next round. After the race, Coach and his team examine Jensen's car and find the gadgets working fine. Confused by the malfunction during the race, Jensen confronts Hennessy and accuses her of planning the situation to frame him and replace Frankenstein. Hennessy doesn't confirm or deny, but she shows Jensen a photo of his daughter in foster care, hinting that cooperation could bring them back together. Cornered by circumstances, Jensen reluctantly goes back to the yard. In an honest talk with Coach, Jensen learns about the mysterious person guiding Frankenstein's team. Coach reveals he's eligible for parole, but he prefers the familiar world of the races over the changed world outside the prison. As they build trust, Coach expresses doubt about Jensen being responsible for his wife's death. As twilight descends, an encounter with Pachenko stirs Jensen's suspicions. Following Pachenko to his pit, Jensen falls into a trap and faces a brutal assault. In a dire moment, Lists intervenes, stabbing Pachenko with a pen. Jensen seizes the chance, arming himself with a shard of metal and overpowering his captors. Battling Pachenko, Jensen forces the truth from him. Hennessy coerced Pachenko into his wife's murder, while Ulrich was the one who led him to Jensen's home. Jensen stands on the precipice of vengeance as he prepares to end Pachenko's life. However, Ulrich and another guard intervene, disrupting the confrontation. As the second stage of the race approaches, Pachenko attempts to provoke Jensen with the same hand gesture. Unfazed, Jensen strategically slows down and enters a tunnel to confer privately with Case. Suspecting foul play, Jensen confronts her about Frank's death, hinting at her possible involvement. Fearing expulsion from the car, Case reveals that she sabotaged Frank's rear weapons for her freedom, unintentionally causing his demise. Hennessy's motive was to keep him imprisoned and racing for public entertainment. Armed with the truth, Jensen accelerates back into the race, focusing on defeating Pachenko. Evading Joe's advances, Jensen targets Pachenko, leading to a high-stakes showdown. A strategic maneuver catches everyone off guard as Jensen turns the car around and unleashes firepower while driving in reverse. Pachenko's car is severely damaged, crashing into a barrier. Jensen steps out and confronts Pachenko, seeking retribution for his wife's death by breaking his neck. Amid the chaos and with Joe changing navigators during the race, Hennessy brings out a dangerous weapon, the Dreadnought, a powerful truck with multiple weapons. The Dreadnought can even climb buildings and destroy two of the smaller competitors. With only Jensen and Joe left, 
things look grim against the massive truck. Jensen realizes the urgency and comes up with a bold plan. Using List's help, he communicates with Joe and suggests they work together temporarily. They team up, attacking the Dreadnought from both sides while avoiding its continuous attacks. They use a trap manhole cleverly, causing the Dreadnought to crash and giving them a brief break. As the second stage of the race ends, only Jensen and Joe are left as competitors for the final stage. Later, Joe subtly notices that Jensen's voice sounds like Frank's, but he doesn't ask more. In the shadows, Ulrich and Hennessy plot against Jensen, planting a bomb under his car. They distract everyone with a speech about the importance of racing in their lives. Jensen starts realizing that the races are manipulated systematically. Contestants who could win a fifth time are eliminated to prevent that from happening. Coach enlightens Jensen about a critical detail concerning Grimm's death, sparking a daring plan. Jensen requests Lists to add a reserve fuel tank to his car before proposing a partnership to Joe. As Jensen prepares in Frank's attire, Hennessy visits him, offering an alternative. If he wins, she wants him to stay in prison as Frankenstein, claiming it's where he truly belongs and citing his supposed inability to provide for his daughter. Jensen accepts the race without giving her a definite response, concealing the release papers in his pocket. At the race's onset, Ulrich manipulates the manholes to hinder Jensen while providing advantages to Joe. With precise timing, Ulrich opens fire on Jensen, damaging his rear shield. Jensen decides to discard the shield, yet Joe expertly evades it using knowledge passed down from Frank's strategy. The high high-stakes competition reaches its climax as Jensen devises a cunning plan to outwit not only Joe but also the rigged system that seeks to thwart his victory. As Hennessy makes a defensive move by opening a manhole, tempting Jensen, Joe responds by firing a rocket and blowing it up. With many rockets at his disposal, Joe sends them to Jensen. Jensen skillfully avoids them and guides them to hit a weak part of a wall, the same wall where Grimm had died. Jensen and Joe plan this carefully to take advantage of the wall's weakness. Their plan works as the rockets breach the wall, creating an escape path from the prison. Hennessy gets angry and stops the broadcast. She gets the police ready and tries to set off a bomb, but it doesn't explode. Coach and his team had already disarmed the bomb, so Joe and Jensen were safe. They speed toward a bridge with police cars chasing them. Jensen uses a crucial part of his plan by releasing more fuel from a tank. This causes an explosion that creates a fiery barrier, stopping the police from following them. They both drive quickly, taking different paths on the bridge. Helicopters focus on Jensen because he's the more important target. Joe gets away, and Case, who owes Frank a favor, Favor, helps with the final part of the plan. Jensen finds refuge under construction cranes, while Case, dressed like Frank, drives. Helicopters surround her with gunfire, and she has to surrender. Disguised as Frank, she's caught and taken back to the prison, unknowingly helping Jensen escape. Joe and Jensen reunite and get on a freight train. Back in the prison, Ulrich is excited about high ratings and awards. Hennessy opens a gift box that triggers a bomb Ulrich had hidden, and both of them die. Coach, at the racetrack with a detonator, watches it happen. Six months later in Santa Rosalia, Mexico, Joe and Jensen start new lives as mechanics. Jensen reconnects with his daughter, and Case, after dealing with bureaucracy, visits with a racing car, symbolizing their strong bond and shared journey. The story ends with them looking forward to their freedom and life together.